The Baltimore Ravens got the win, but neither team on Thursday night left without a loss or two. That and all of your week 11 action coming up next on today's episode of Locked on NFL. You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome in, everybody, to this Friday episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast covering the National Football League, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks so much for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. I'm David Harrison on Twitter at dharrison82, host of Locked On Commanders and Locked On Bucks, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. He is Tony Wiggins on Twitter at Shop Talk Wig. It's two Gs on the end of that thing. Host of Locked On Jaguars with over 10 years of covering Duval's favorite football franchise. Locked On NFL is here with you every Monday through Friday, along with the everydayers and everydayers you already know, but I'll tell you anyway, we appreciate your continued support for the program and the network. This episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL, all lowercase, and you'll get a first deposit match up to $100 on this episode. We're going to predict the remaining games in week 11 of the NFL regular season. But first, we got to talk about the week 11 opener between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. One of the better Thursday night matchups uh, we'd seen coming up on this schedule at the end. The Baltimore Ravens walk away 34 to 20 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they get the win wig. The Baltimore Ravens now they're eight and three. The Cincinnati Bengals are five and five. The Ravens are the second seed in the AFC first seed. If the Eagles beat the chiefs in the Super Bowl rematch on Monday night football, and it's still November. So, you know, don't, don't take too much stock in that, but you have to look at these two teams and the Ravens and Bengals, arguably part of the best division in football how do you feel these two teams' trajectories are changing or are going in different directions uh, at this point in the season? I thought uh, Cleveland, uh, I'm sorry, I thought Cincinnati had actually gotten to the point where they had turned it around, and now it looks like they're unhealthy. And then yeah. it looks like Cleveland ain't, ain't healthy either. So it's, it might be a matter of survival of the fittest, you know what I'm saying, uh, with the yep. way that it's going. And, and, and then little Pittsburgh just kind of, Hanging around there like the little engine that could. So it is the best division in football. And uh, it's unfortunate that these things aren't decided just based on the results. But this time of year, the injury bug uh, starts to creep mm-hmm. in and now things start to shape up. Because I was wondering how it was going to go. And then all of a sudden, I forgot that football is the kind of sport that in a blink of an eye, things could just kind of level off for you. And uh, the, the story starts to write itself. So too bad for those fan bases. But it is what it is, man. It happens every single year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, no, and nobody knows on that field uh, on Thursday night how quickly your fortunes can change. Then Odell Beckham Jr., uh, who was a young receiver, suddenly the biggest star in the NFL after making an amazing one handed catch that everybody wants to emulate uh, ever since then. The next thing you know, he's jettisoned out of his team off to a new team. Then he's playing in the Super Bowl on his way to an MVP, tears his ACL, and he's just been kind of trying to get his foot feet under him ever since then. But on this night, Odell Beckham Jr., four catches, 116 yards. Didn't find the end zone, but still a very good performance uh, for him. Some stats real quick. Lamar Jackson, Ravens quarterback, finished 16-26, 264 yards, uh, two touchdowns passing. Joe Burrow, 11 of 17, 101 yards passing and a touchdown before he had to leave the game with his injury. Uh, His backup quarterback, 8 for 14, 68 yards and a touchdown. A garbage time touchdown. Jamar Chase, two catches, 12 yards. Rough stat line. Did get the touchdown. Uh, so if you're like the guy I'm playing in fantasy this weekend, you're happy about the garbage time ch- touchdown. But, you know, Jamar Chase and the Cincinnati Bengals are going to be worried about a lot of things because this might be the best five and five team at this point in the season that we've seen in a long, long time. The Cincinnati Bengals certainly talented, but they have had their share of struggles this year. Um, Joe Burrow and Cam Taylor Britt, the Bengals cornerback, two of five players that left this game with injuries that could have ramifications moving on in the season. Let's start with those Bengals uh, real quick, because I think those injuries are going to be the biggest because number one is Joe Burrow. And then, of course, you have Cam Taylor Britt. What was going through your mind as you watched that play? It was a touchdown play to to running back Joe Mixon. uh, And and as soon as that ball left Joe Burrow's hand, you saw the pain. Then you see him trying to get loose on the sideline, just not working. 
ultimately gone for the game. What, what were your, what was going through your head having watched as many, as many football games as you had watching Joe Burrow go through what he was dealing with? Um, that when people saw a brace on his wrist earlier this week, it was like much to do about nothing. And I'm sitting there thinking like, it's always something to do about something. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, it, it, the, the sad part about Joe is with the way that he played uh, coming into the league, you wonder, you wonder. And then with the Bengals offensive line, and then he got hurt. You just keep wondering, is this going to be the, the, the story when it comes to Joe Burrow? The injuries happen to everybody. But then when they start to constantly happen, like they happened at Aaron, the end of Aaron Rodgers' career, well, he's still playing, but he's hurt again, right? Yep. And it's not something that's just happened the last year or two. I didn't even realize, like, over the last five years, the dude kept getting banged up. I didn't realize mm -hmm. that. So you, you always have this fear that once that stuff starts, that it's just going to always keep finding a way to happen. And that's just too bad, man. Uh, uh, Joe might have to change the way he plays a little bit. You know, he, he might have to get that ball out and, and not be as much Joe Montana and Steve Young as he, mm -hmm. as he has been early in his career. Might have to turn a little bit of Tom Brady and turn into a little bit of Peyton Manning, get the ball out and just stay healthy because that's the only way that team has a chance to win. Yeah, and Joe certainly has the football IQ for it, right? He certainly has the mental acuity for it. It's just whether or not – uh, his his level of competition, his competitive drive is going to let him kind of wrench wrench it, mm -hmm. wrench it down enough to stay healthy. And, and you mentioned, I mean, Joe Burrow, first a knee injury. Uh, of course, this season alone, he's at the calf during training camp preseason. And now he's got this. I, I honestly, watching him, I thought it was an elbow. They say it's a wrist. Um, interesting storyline here. We, we don't have to get too deep into this right now because it's not anything yet. Maybe if it becomes something, we talk about it later on. But. Joe Burrow not on the injury report from the Cincinnati Bengals at all. And, and truth be told, if he's a full participant, you don't necessarily have to put him on there. But if there's any any little sliver of doubt that he might play the game, NFL teams are supposed to report those. So he gets off the plane with, with the wrist brace or device or whatever it is. Um, and there's already a little bit of social media murmuring that maybe the Cincinnati Bengals skirted the rules a little bit. Do you think that's something or do you think it's nothing? I think it's something. And the reason why I think it's something – People don't realize that these injury reports started to be mandatory uh, because of gambling. Because of, uh, and this was before that there was any connection between the sports books and the NFL. This was because folks thought that some teams may have had insider information or guys had insider information and, and it wasn't uh, available to everyone. So now, Everybody has to be transparent. If you get an ingrown toenail, I don't care if you get a hangnail. If your tooth is bothering you, you better put it on the injury report, right? I think there may be some people that may have some things to say about this one because uh, I know you try to create an advantage. It's not your place to give your opponents information, but we would have to remember why these injury reports are so important, and especially now with the gambling component in the NFL having a partnership that's a no, no, you got to, you can't do it. You got to, you got to let everybody know what's going on because there were people that speculated about that all week. Now, what if they were like, he's hurt. And then other people were like, well, he's not on the injury report. And then he's having a good game. He's cooking. It's a close game. We've had some clunkers, you know, on, on the primetime games, everybody's looking forward to it. And then he gets hurt. And now people double back and do what I just did when people said, well, I thought he, they said he really wasn't. So now, uh, that whole thing comes into play. And we're even sitting here talking about it th at this time. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's the problem. That's why you have to be transparent and the rules are the rules. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you're, you're, you have a little bit of autonomy, but you got to play within the limits that they set. And so we'll see if it becomes more of a story or if it just kind of fades into social media oblivion like some of these things do, but certainly not going to fade away. The injury to Mark Andrews, uh, tied in for the Baltimore Ravens, happened early, wasn't mm -hmm. able to come back. So everybody's going to be watching that. Lamar Jackson came up hobbled at one point as well. He finished the game, so it shouldn't be be too big of a deal, especially now they kind of have that that fake buy, that pseudo buy that we talk about before they face the Los Angeles Chargers in Week 12. Odell Beckham Jr. also left the game late with a reported shoulder injury. So the, the Baltimore Ravens got the win, but they did not leave uh, unscathed. And Bengals linebacker Logan Wilson responsible for all three of those Ravens injuries during the game. So hopefully, hopefully he's not taking too much pride in that, but aggressive play, aggressive tackle, by the Bengals linebacker doing some damage against the Baltimore Ravens. But what about the rest of week 11? Wig and I are going to tell you what to expect as the rest of the NFL schedule gets going on. That's going on. That's going up today on Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.
Today's episode of Locked On NFL brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. I pick three player projections every Thursday night football matchup. This week, I went with Bengals running back Joe Mixon to get more than half a touchdown. Ravens kicker Justin Tucker to make more than one and a half field goals and Ravens receiver Odell Beckham Jr. to get more than two receptions. Like Baltimore, I had a pretty good night and now you can make your picks and win some cash just like I did. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that promo code is locked on NFL, all lowercase at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL to get a first deposit match up to $100 price picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks again for making locked on NFL your first listen or view today and every day. Every day is greatly appreciate you coming through supporting the network like you do. Locked on has also launched the first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on sports today is here for you 24 seven covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of locked on plus our national shows covering every single league. We got fantasy sports. We got real sports. We got all the sports. Go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. I'll tell you what, if you're an early riser or late to bed person like I am, that is a lifesaver because sometimes I go to football on like NFL Network and it's playing like the 1996 Super Bowl. And no, dis- no disrespect to those guys, but I'm not, I'm not trying to stay up later, get up early in the morning and watch a Super Bowl from when I was a teenager. I'm trying to watch current content. I flip over Locked On Sports today, and they got me covered. Uh, so just another great part of this network. But Wig, hopefully some really great football coming up in Week 11. Speaking of the Chargers that the Baltimore Ravens will face in about 10 days' time, uh, they're visiting the Green Bay Packers. Justin Herbert against Jordan Love. Uh, Chargers favored by three points. Who do you got in that one? Chargers should be favored by three points because, you know, they should be better at this point. But somehow I'm a, I think they're going to find a way to lose another game late and people are going to be calling for Brandon Staley's job. So I, I do think at some point Green Bay has to show that they do have a little bit more potential than they have shown so far. So I'm going to go with a little bit of an upset and take the Packers. All right. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when you when you look at this game, you got to watch the health of Aaron Jones the running back. Uh, he's been struggling mm-hmm. all year long to try and stay healthy. We'll see if, if if he's ready to go and how much he's ready to go. I think without him, I got to go Chargers with him. I think I can believe in a Packers upset, but I definitely got to go Chargers until I know Aaron Jones is going to be healthy. Uh, next game up, we got Tennessee Titans visiting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wig, you know a little bit about this matchup. You're going to be covering this matchup over at Locked On Jaguars. Jags favored by seven. How do you like that spread? I like the spread because Tennessee's struggling and their offensive line is struggling. Uh, if you listen to the Jaguar fans and me all week, you think that the Jaguars are struggling too, even though they had won five of six. Uh, the problem is the way that they lost. And all, all of the games they've lost this year, they lost in the same way. I don't think Tennessee is capable of making them uh, pay for it the way the rest of those teams were. So I think the Jaguars cover. Yeah, I think the Jaguars cover that spread as well. The best thing I can give you from this matchup, running back Tajay Spears, look for him. See what prize picks has in the line for him, if they have a line for him. Uh, he's he's a sneaky pick. So if that line is somewhere between around like 15 rushing yards or like 20 to 25 total yards mm-hmm. of offense, you might want to go more than on prize picks on Tajay Spears if that's a line, if that line becomes available ahead of that game. Next game, Las Vegas Raiders, Miami Dolphins. This spread is huge. Miami Dolphins favored by 12 and a half points wig is there any way the las las vegas raiders and max crosby keep this thing from being a 14 or more point win for the miami dolphins early yeah because since antonio pierce has taken over they played more spirited but eventually no the dolphins are gonna pull away and catch them because they never stop and they're, they're gonna get yeah. Devin a chain back i think and that's gonna help their running game so i look for miami to lay a real real good whooping on uh, las vegas yeah, look, I'll be honest with you. I streamed the Las Vegas Raiders defense the last two weeks in fantasy football because mm-hmm. I love that switch to Antonio Pierce, uh, you know, and and, and they, when they paid off for me. I had Tyreek Hill on a bye last week. Uh, he's fresh. He's energized. And the Miami Dolphins are one of the best teams in the AFC. He's going to come out looking to ball out because he didn't get a touchdown against the Chiefs and he wants to make somebody pay for it. 
it's going to be the Raiders, and it's going to be the guy playing me in fantasy uh, this weekend. Sorry for you, brother, but that's how it's going to happen. The Dolphins are going to win that one big. Dallas Cowboys on the road against a road against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, just put a whooping on the New York Giants last weekend. Uh, Carolina Panthers uh, once again changing offensive play callers because everybody knows. The best way to create offensive consistency is just switch back and forth on the play caller yeah. all season long. Cowboys favored by 10 and a half wig. Uh, what do you think? How, do, how, how are the Carolina Panthers possibly going to make this thing closer than 10 points? They can't. And the reason why is they can't separate. They can't go deep. Therefore, Dallas doesn't fear that anyone is going to be able to go deep and they're going to turn the pass rushers loose on Chase Young. And that, that's just a, if there was ever a bad matchup for a quarterback, it's, Michael Parsons and the crew playing yeah. against them. So uh, when they don't have a deep threat and um, Dallas, I think Dallas going to uh, cover the spread in the first quarter. Yeah. Bryce Young. I mean, every quarterback wants to identify Michael Parsons before the snap, right? Bryce Young is definitely going to need to know where Mike is. Cause if he doesn't know where he is, he's going to find out very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause Mike is going to find him very quickly. And like you said, I mean, no better weapon on the Carolina Panthers offense right now than Adam Thielen. And no disrespect to Adam Thielen, but he's not stretching the field anymore uh, on, on the on the NFL playing surface. So next matchup, Arizona Cardinals versus the Houston Texans. Kyler Murray is back, but the Texans are favored by four and a half points. Uh, C.J. Stroud or Kyler Murray? Wait, who you got in this one? A little slick, interesting game because Arizona has played, believe it or not, despite their record, they have really, really played hard. You want to talk about moral victories and for the future. Uh, but right now, C.J. Stroud is, is hot as fish grease, man. And I think they want to keep it real close with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So uh, I'm going to say that they're going to go ahead and pull this one off because I think now they it's more than just confidence. I think they're starting to believe that they're really, really good. Yeah, no, I think they are. I think D'Amico Ryans are the head coach, the new head coach in Houston. He's He's got that team believing he should certainly be near the top of that coach of the year conversation. I got a sneaky feeling about this one, though, too. You kind of mentioned that, like, uh -huh. the Arizona Cardinals, they got Kyler Murray back. Like, I picked them to win last weekend when a lot of people didn't, and they put they proved me right. Um, I don't know, man. I think if I'm, I'm, if I'm a money line guy, I'm going Houston here. But if if I'm a spread guy, I think I'm going to take the Arizona Cardinals with those four and a half points and then think that they might keep it close, if not get the upset. So that's an interesting to watch for sure. I think it's more entertaining of a game than we would have expected uh, eight weeks ago. Pittsburgh Steelers on the road to face the Cleveland Browns. No Deshaun Watson. Uh, young quarterback on young quarterback, one and a half point spread on this one in favor of Cleveland. Um, should the Steelers feel disrespected by that win? Yeah, but I don't care what they feel like. I, I actually I'm going with this because this is yeah. a situation where uh, the the kryptonite for the Steelers is a team that can play defense the way Cleveland can. And mm -hmm. uh that ain't going away. Deshaun Watson didn't play uh, de uh, defense. Miles Garrett does. So I really think you want you want to talk about an ugly game. You want to talk about a, a, a game that actually epitomizes that division is going to be this one. But I think Cleveland's going to be able to pull it out because their defense is very good. I think they found some more running game. They can still block people because of their front. I really, really do think Cleveland's going to win. Yeah, you know what? I mean, you you have a very valid point. Look, the over under on the total points scored in this matchup is thirty two and a half points. I really think mm -hmm. the first team to make it to seventeen. If either team makes it to 17, wins this game. And I mean, 17 to 14, they don't they don't cover uh, that point spread. So, I mean, you, you just you look at this matchup, it's going to be a defensive matchup. And I think it really boils down to which young quarterback makes the, the fewest uh, mistakes. New York Giants visiting the Washington Commanders. This is the game that I will be at. I will be at FedEx. I will be talking about everything that goes on with Washington Commanders for Locked On Commanders. Washington is favored by nine and a half points over the New York Giants wig. The Giants are depleted by injuries like Dexter Lawrence and Saquon Barkley. They're basically the only two healthy dudes the Giants got, although their offensive line is getting a little bit healthier. Uh, the Washington Commanders on paper should win this thing by, by multiple scores, by a couple of scores, uh, especially the way the offense has been playing. But the last time these two teams played, the Giants won 14 to seven. And I have yet to cover wig a Giants Commanders game where the Commanders won. I've yet to see that happen. What do you think? What's what's my fate going to be this weekend at FedEx Field? It's going to change. I think Washington is going to win. But uh, I do think this game is going to be a little bit tighter than uh, we think. And that's because of what you just said. It is a rivalry game. Um, you look back and Washington and Philadelphia was way closer than people thought, right? And then yeah. Washington will go and lose a game that they're supposed to win. But I think it's going to be close. But I do think the difference is 
Eric B. Enemy can roll out of bed and get 20 points, and I'm not sure the Giants can do that uh, against Washington. Yeah, that's going to be the key, man. The commanders tend to play up to competition. Like you mentioned, the Philadelphia Eagles a couple times, the Seattle Seahawks, they took to the ropes, uh, all that, but they also play down to competition and sometimes under competition. If you look back to Chicago Bears on uh, that Thursday night debacle in FedEx Field uh, that weekend. So we'll see what happens there. We got six more games to cover for the end of week 11, including the best game of the of week 11, Super Bowl rematch, Kelsey Bowl, family reunion, whatever you want to call that game. But we got five other games to get to that first. Coming up next on today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It's time to pull out your lucky jersey and order your favorite apps and snacks on DoorDash because football is coming again this weekend. Today's episode of Locked on NFL brought to you by DoorDash. Why root for your favorite team on an empty stomach? You wouldn't do it in the stadium. Don't do it at home. Order on DoorDash and save on football watch party favorites. If you're ever in the FedEx field area for a Washington Commanders game, make sure you check out Golden Bowl and their shrimp broccoli dish and their shrimp egg rolls. Those are two of their most popular items ordered from their menu. If you're staying home, kick back at kickoff with unbeatable deals on everything you need for your watch party. All of your favorite restaurants and stores from retail to grocery, they're all on the app so you can shop everything you need to get game day ready or get prepared before game day, stock up on your favorite appetizers and order all your tailgate gear on DoorDash. Then just get ready to watch your favorite team win. Get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order after downloading the DoorDash app and using the promo code LOCKED23. Don't forget to use the promo code LOCKED23 for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. All right, guys, wrapping up this episode of Locked On NFL Friday. Tony Wiggins, David Harrison here with you, wrapping up our Week 11 predictions. Wig, we got an NFC North matchup. Uh, the Chicago Bears, a lot of excitement surrounding them. Entering the season, not so much excitement. Now, during the season, the Detroit Lions, though, Dan Campbell, another Coach of the Year candidate. Detroit is favored at home by 7.5 points. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with that one? It's a little tricky game because the Bears have been playing a little more spirited, right? Now you bring back Justin Fields. And before he got hurt, those two games before he got hurt, he was looking like fantasy football hero Justin Fields again. It's a bad game to come back to, though, because Detroit's nasty, man. And they can really, really score points. And uh, I think they're going to cover the seven points. I think it'll be close for a while, but eventually Detroit bites enough kneecaps to pull away. <laughs> yeah, these I mean, these division matchups are always tough, but the NFC North matchups may be a little bit tougher. And I do think the Lions pull this one off. But I think that the Bears keep it maybe a little bit interesting for quite a while uh, in that one. Next game, two teams coming off of wins, uh, but there's an 11 and a half point spread here between the San Francisco 49ers at home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But again, the, the Bucs just beat the Titans. The Niners just beat the Jags. The Jags and Titans are going in opposite directions, but they're meeting this weekend. We already talked about them. Uh, Wig, 11 and a half point spread, man. When you look at what the 49ers are doing once again, even though it's only one week since that three game losing streak, uh, do you think they're back or do you think you need to see it for another week against the Buccaneers before you think they're actually back? No, I think they're back. I think they fixed some stuff last week against a formidable opponent after three weeks. And they look like the team that everybody believes that they are. You got Trent Williams back, got Debo Samuel back. Brandon Ayuk is slowly have, uh, quietly having a really, really good year for them. And they got George Kittle down the seam last week. So, yeah. yeah. And, of course, Christian McCaffrey. They're back. They're going to win this game. And they're going to show everybody that they are formidable. Yeah, this is the other team I cover, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Locked On Bucks. You can check us out. We're having a lot of fun over there. I don't know if we're going to have a lot of fun after this game, though. I think yeah. that the San Francisco 49ers are that team. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a team, a, a solid team looking to find uh, ways to get better, but I don't think it's going to happen this weekend. New York Jets facing the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are suddenly just all kinds of chaos going on, but they're still favored by seven. Uh, is this a situation where the fired coordinator leaves and the team wakes up? Uh, they better because the Jets have a very, very good defense. Um, all they got to do, I think, if they get the 17 points, the game's over. If they get the 17 points in the first quarter, the game's over. I don't think the Jets can score. So, uh, Buffalo's going to win. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, the Jets' defense has to keep this thing in within reach. And if they can't do that, then then certainly things are going to be a little bit tricky. And, yeah, those those coaching changes, man. Some, usually it's head coach, but sometimes coordinators, those things can can spark something. Uh, this game's a one-point spread. Seattle Seahawks favored by one on the road facing the Los, the Los Angeles Rams. 
Uh, what do you think? What do you think happens there uh, in this NFC West battle? Seattle wins. Uh, they, they've been they've been in some close games this year that they won and lost. Uh, but mm-hmm. they have a very, very good defense. Bobby Wagner looks like he's found a fountain of youth. And Geno Smith, he might struggle for a while, but eventually in the fourth quarter, he'll find a way to get it going. And uh, I, I, I got a good feeling that they beat the Rams and they cover. Yeah, I think the Seahawks pull this one off, too. You know, I know that maybe some people are a little bit shook after what happened against the Washington Commanders. Took a last-second field goal for them to get that win, and, and there's not a lot of respect around Washington, so that kind of shakes people. But when you look at two of the touchdowns that the Seahawks gave up, really uncharacteristic, bad angles, bad pursuits on both on two of those three touchdowns, I think that gets cleaned up a little bit, especially with the division rival uh, game on the road. So I think the Seahawks pulled this one off. The Denver Broncos, suddenly a lot of people do not want to see the Denver Broncos, especially if you have playoff aspirations You do not want to see the Denver Broncos. The Minnesota Vikings with Josh Dobbs have playoff aspirations. They are two and a half point underdogs in mile high against the Denver Broncos. Which of these stories, the Denver Broncos continuing to knock off playoff caliber teams or Josh Dobbs, his resurgence, if you want to call it a resurgence, uh, his surgence, uh, which which of these stories continues, Wig? I think it's Denver, but I think at this point in the year it's because of that atmosphere. Uh, but yeah. uh, we were laughing at Sean Payton early in the year, man, and people aren't laughing anymore. People are not laughing anymore. We were less riding, and me and James Rapine were picking at Russell Wilson. Not <laughs> no more. They they look like they just uh, went in the closet and, and got some old school put in their veins, and they're blocking and tackling, and they're winning special teams. Yeah. So uh, they're doing it the old-fashioned way, and I think that's going to continue. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Cody, Cody Rourke and Sarah Bettinger over at Locked On Broncos have certainly been having some fun here last last few weeks. And uh, Luke Broad of Locked On Vikings, he's always having fun, no matter what's going on with the Vikings. He's always a good time. So uh, either way, either way, after this game, those two those two shows are definitely going to be a couple to catch for any Locked On fan. Final game of the week, easily the best matchup uh, of the weekend: Philadelphia Eagles at the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, rematch of the Super Bowl, Kelsey Bowl. They're calling it the family reunion game on the on the on the Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey podcast. Uh, Philadelphia Eagles are two and a half point underdogs against the Kansas City Chiefs wig. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to say it first. I think the Eagles pull off the upset win in Kansas City. I'll go with that. I think they've been more consistent. I think what you've seen from Philadelphia on a week to week basis has been uh, the games have looked alike more than the the Chiefs games. But Mm -hmm. I tell you something I'm warning you against. Philly's defense gives up a lot of points sometimes, and I, I I scratch my head and wonder why. I wondered how Washington scored all of those points. If the Philly team that shows up, uh, that showed up against Miami, shows up at Arrowhead, they win the game. And by the way, that was the game I was looking forward to, and it was a yawner. It was a clunker. I really hope this game lives up to it, and I think it will. But uh, I'm going to say Philly's going to cover this thing uh, with at least a field goal. All right. So that's that's the wrap up the of week 11, a good schedule of games. I mean, we got some division rivals, even the games that look like a, a widespread. There's some good storylines to watch up there coming up. We've got locked on NFL kickoff live on Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern. And then Monday, Kevin Ostriker of locked on Ravens. will be back to host locked on NFL Monday to recap some of this weekend's action. So make sure you're subscribed. Got the notifications or the auto downloads turned on so you don't miss any second of the action. For your second listen of the day, check out Locked On Jaguars, Locked On Commanders, Locked On Bucks, or any Locked On NFL team you want to know more about. As always, thank you so much for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day every day. And every day is one last time. We appreciate you for coming through like you do. For Tony Wiggins, I'm David Harrison. We'll see you right back here next Friday for another episode of Locked On NFL, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.